Marriott and Teve is the place to be in case you are uh, looking for Luxaria, like for a luxurious place to enjoy, uh, of course, your money that you work hard for. Remember uh, that it is located on the Entebbe Highway. Uh, just when you get to Entebbe, you can call the numbers on your screen uh, for reservations for uh, anything like food, uh, the gym, the health club, swimming, and as well as other activities that they do have for you. They also have fully fledged rooms where you can spend the night with your loved ones. Uh, my name is Karen Noamani. Welcome to Issues at Hand. Today, the 7th of July, 2023, uh, we are here to discuss some issues that are, are affecting us in general. Today, of course, it is a police day and in studio I do have a guest. But before I get to the guest, uh, there are a number uh, of issues going on in our news that we need to look at. Uh, remember that last night, of course, uh, one of us, uh, one of our tycoons in Uganda uh, was killed or died in a very fatal accident uh, along the Kampala Masaka Highway. Um, his, his name, I think, is Aponya, the short form of Apollo. And, uh, his uh, real name and uh, of course he died very very badly but the disturbing thing is that uh, everyone on social media has decided to become a journalist and uh, some of the people at the scene uh, they got their phones recorded very disturbing videos and uh, they posted them for us to see it was very it's a very very disturbing site and it is still trending and of course uh, we're going to base on that to look at uh, some of the traffic laws uh, we have in Uganda some of the traffic uh, ways that the, of the ways that we are supposed to act uh, in case we are caught up uh, in those situations, in case you're at a scene and something like that happens, what exactly are you supposed to do? Uh, we have a police superintendent, his name is Bruce Oinebia from uh, Kampala Metropolitan North, and he's here with us uh, to discuss some of these issues. You're welcome to studio. Thank you so much, Carol. Thank you, Family TV, for inviting me, inviting me again. Mm. Once again, my name is uh, Superintendent of Police Oinebia Bruce. I am the regional traffic officer of Kampala Metropolitan North. Mm. Kampala North takes areas of uh, Okay. I am so happy to be with you. Uh, the the issue of uh, last night uh, accident, mm. actually it was not on Kampala Masaka, mm -hmm. it was on, uh, on Mbarara Ntongam, mm. in a place called Itojo, if you know that corner. Yeah, I yeah. Know and uh, I think uh, the, the late Aponya was going to his, uh, his home area, ancestral home, yes. yeah, ancestral home uh, in uh, is, 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 is it Ruchiga? I think yeah. Ruchiga, yes. Uh, I read uh, uh, the, 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 the report mm. uh, of, the, of the DTO, or District Traffic Office of Ntungamo. Mm. And when you see it, the cause of the crash, mm. and you see what happened uh, earlier this month, on the presidential bill and on, 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 on the bill of, 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 of the speed, mm -hmm. uh, the new law that that that, that we saw, mm -hmm. then you relate that this bill was actually on time. Mm -hmm. It was timely. It and was. It, it was. It, it is very necessary. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at the the, the, the numbers, the numbers of crashes, mm. the fatalities are still going up. True. Statistics show uh, six years ago, up to date, we are seeing numbers going up almost by 10%. Mm. When you look at the annual traffic report of 2022, and you saw the crashes that we had, you will, you will not believe it. Mm. In 2022, we had over 20,000 20, mm. crashes. When you look at the, the people that died, 4,534. Okay? 4,534 people. That is people. around Uganda or just Kampala? It's in Uganda. Okay. Now, mm. serious injuries, what, well, serious accidents, people who got serious injuries. We are looking at people who either lost their legs, people who lost their arms, mm. people who, who got disabled because of crashes, of these accidents. Mm. 15,227. Uh, 15,000 mm. 15, people. Of the 20,000 crashes, yes. 15,000 got disabled. You, you get what I'm trying to tell you. Yes. Tell you. People, we, we are looking at Carol right now. You have gotten out here. Mm. Before, as you're entering, you're crossing the road. 
either Boda Boda has knocked you and has broken your leg. Mm. Literally meaning you have lost, uh, you cannot come back to your job, mm. your children are going to suffer out there. Mm. You understand? I was thinking about the Aponya accident. This is, what, he, he has been one of the millionaires that mm. we have. Mm. I thought about how many people this gentleman has been able to touch. How many people have been feeding from the Aponye? Mm. Because his, his, his business was serious. How many farmers have been benefiting from this businessman? But now the life is normal. Mm. Because we saw his motor vehicle ramming into a stationary vehicle. Mm. My thinking is maybe there was a speed element in it. Every single day, we tell Ugandans, for the last 20 years we have been in community policing, crime prevention. Every Friday, invite us here, we talk. Signages are on the road. Everybody, before you get the driving licenses, you are told on how to drive on the road. Mm. But people are taking road safety for a joke. Mm. When you look at the statistics of Ministry of Health, last year alone, we lost people, I think, 19,000 to malaria. Okay. okay. But you see the statistics of people who have perished on the road. Mm. We are looking at 4,000. Now, my question is, have we given the attention mm. that we have given to fight against malaria have we given it the same attention to road safety? Because each and every child knows that I am not supposed to sleep when there is no mosquito net. Mm. But parents, friends, the clergy, the politicians, how many times have you talked to our people about road safety? How many times have you told that child that when you are going to cross the road, you look to the left, right, and left again, then you cross. How many times have you told your son, but my son, when you reach at the traffic uh, lights, please, the green light tells you that you can go. The amber tells you that you be ready. The, the red tells you that you stop. Carol, last year alone, in Kampala alone, we lost over 450 people, mm -hmm. 458. And 75% of those ones were Buddha Buddha riders. Mm -hmm. My question is, when I was, uh, when I just, uh, when I came in, in the studio, mm -hmm. church house, you are able to see the whole of Kampala. You have a very good view. And I was looking at Kampala Road, how Boda Boda riders are not respecting the traffic lights here at Kampala Road. Mm -hmm. Yet every single day, they are continuing to die. And you know what pains most? Mm -hmm. the, now, the, the age group that dies is 18, 18 to 64. This is the most energetic. And when it comes to border border riders, they are young people, 18 to 35. Now, unless as the country, as the community of Uganda, as the people of Uganda, we start taking road safety very seriously, 
then we shall continue perishing. Wow. Um, right there is where I, I want to bring in the issue of uh, traffic officers. Sometimes these lights are showing green, which means go. Mm. The Afandi is telling them to stop. stop. Oh, yes. Oh, so yes. there is there's a conflict there. Mm -hmm. Should I follow the traffic lights mm. or should I follow the officer? If I follow the traffic lights, the officer will mm. get me inside. Yes. Pads. If I follow the... You understand? So yes. I, why I, is there that confusion? Thank still? you. Thank you so much, Carol. Mm. There shouldn't be confusion. The mm. law is very clear. The traffic, you know, mm. I love, I love, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the, our legislators are doing a very good, a very good job. Mm. For example, when, uh, I don't know, when you saw uh, this new law that has come in, mm. we shall talk we about it, I think, it. later. Mm. But even there is a law that tells you that a traffic officer takes precedence over over the lights. Now, I'll explain why. Mm. Let's take an example of Ginger Road traffic lights. At this time, it is 9.14. Ginger Road, on a single day, brings in more than 45,000 vehicles in Kampala City in the morning hours. Mm. But when you see the vehicles that are coming out of Kampala going outside, mm. You, they, 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 they are less than even 5,000 vehicles. Now, we have not reached a level, have not seen intelligent traffic lights. Some countries have them. Mm. The intelligent traffic lights, what do they do? They will monitor that the side of Ginger Road has 45,000 vehicles. Mm. And they'll give it more than 30, time, 30 minutes of green light. Please come in. You understand? But the lights that we have in this country, we, are, we time them. You find has given this side five minutes, has given this side five minutes. Now, in 2019, there was this argument mm. in Kampala here, mm. where one leader of Kampala city said, no. Traffic police is the one that is bringing jam. And the, another leader from Uganda police said, no, let's first see. Mm. Traffic officers, let's, let, let, let's allow the traffic lights mm. to work. I don't know whether you were around. Mm -hmm. I was. <laughs> you saw, I, I think that day, personally, I left the road at 2 a.m. Mm. Clearing people to go home because of withdrawing traffic officers. Now, the traffic lights are not intelligent, that the ones that we have. They are just timed. The roads, when you look at our roads 20 years ago, mm -hmm. and the traffic flow, of course, there are changes. 20 years ago, you'd find the whole of Kampala has maybe, maybe 50,000 vehicles. But right now, we are talking about the numbers which are almost reaching 400,000. Just Kampala. You understand? Mm. But the roads have not increased in the size. Now, that is why you still, we still need the traffic officer to intervene. in, you call it violating the traffic lights, but it is necessary. Mm. The way they are doing it right now, mm. in the morning, prioritizing Ginger Road, in the evening you'll see they are not prioritizing Ginger Road. They are going to prioritize emptying Kampara to Ginger Road. Mm. Until we reach the level of which I believe we are about to, because technology, each and if other countries have it, I think with the time we shall also have that technology. Mm -hmm. If we get to those intelligent traffic lights mm -hmm. that are able to see that golf course has more vehicles, now give it 
a priority. Mm. When that time comes, we shall get there. And secondly, emergencies. However, people are misusing emergencies. Uh, three, four months ago, we had this operation of, of removing sirens from the from some vehicles who have put them illegally. Mm. I remember, we, 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 I think we, we, we removed over 400 vehicles. Mm. We removed the sirens and, and, and illegal, they are called swiveling lights from over 400 vehicles within Kampara metropolitan area. Mm. And we had, uh, we were calm, but now they have started coming back. Mm. Now, of course, they are the ones that kill the, the, the issue of an emergency vehicle. But honestly, when you reach at Murago roundabout, mm. or Wandega area, most of the ambulances are coming to Murago. By the time an ambulance is facing Murago direction, that is the national referral hospital. That means the person who is there is in a critical what? Condition. And needs the mother who, the, the woman who is there is about to give birth. Mm. Now, I, I, I think now you understand why the officer who is standing at Wandegaya traffic lights mm. must violate those traffic lights and give priority to the emergency vehicle. Mm. So those are the reasons. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Uh, you mentioned um, technology yes. in there. And I'd like to know, does uh, the Uganda police, especially the traffic police, have equipment, good equipment, or, uh, or uh, up-to-date equipment yes. to handle their work? Because wow. we're seeing in other countries, yes. they really have uh, good equipment, first of all, that can help them uh, curb the violators, they can help them curb number plates of people who are trying to run away from traffic police officers, you know? So is there... Um, adequate equipment when well, it comes to Uganda wow, police? Wow, wow. Well, that's a very good question, mm. Madam Carol. Mm. I want to thank first the Inspector General of Police and the, the, the Director of Traffic and Road Safety. Mm. Reason why a traffic was, traffic police was, 10 years ago, mm. is not where we are. I think it was 2018 going down. 2018, 2017, 2018. No, 2019, to be exact. Use in our enforcement used us with the books. Hmm? Mm. Our EPS, uh, we used to give EPS on, we used to write on receipts. Quite a popular, mm. then you go. But it has changed. Now you, you, you'll see our officers with a small tab, computer, and a printer. Mm. Now, what does that computer do? It will capture the offense. It will capture Carol's permit number. Now, in the permit number of Carol, once I place, it's called validation. It will validate and bring the picture of Carol. Oh. You understand? We used to have a challenge of people forging mm. driving licenses from here in your neighborhood at NASA. <laughs> but now that one is not there completely. The business of forgery of not driving licenses mm. died from when they introduced, when we introduced these driving licenses. The second gadget that we have And of course, these tickets are instant, okay? Uh, when, when I issue, I print it to you, then I give you, you 28 days to clear. However, that one, uh, the Inspector General of Police has guided that it does not work for border borders. I know somebody might bring it up. Because border borders, once I stop there and I say stop, nobody is going to stop you, you want to knock me. So when I've gotten you committing an offense for you, I'll force you to go and pay that ticket instantly. Mm. It was hard for us to get you. Mm. So the 28 days uh, of, of that receipt for a border border rider, uh, that one is not working. 
we have a directive and a guidance from the Inspector General of Police. Now, the second gadget that we always have is a breath analyzer. This one measures the alcohol content in your body. We call it kawunyam. Mm. In, a, in the Kampala language here mm. in Uganda. Now, when you have to look at these crashes, the numbers that I gave you, we still have a big challenge of people driving under the influence of alcohol. Mm -hmm. Now, when you take alcohol, you lose your, you cannot make good decisions while on the road. Mm -hmm. Need I tell people whenever you're going to drink, Tonywa Novga, do not drink and drive. So the breath analyzer, and you see, we do not work alone. These, these are international things. Huh? Mm. We, we work with our international partners. So at, they come and see that the machines that we have really are they up to date. Thirdly, we have the speed guns. The speed gun, we have a very, it is the new technology that can capture the video of, of the car, the speed, the meters at which uh, a person operating the machine and uh, where you committed the offense from, mm -hmm. it can capture it, it can bring even the picture of the, of the driver. Hmm? Very well, your action. So basically, when I capture you on speed and I show you, hmm. you will say, not say that no. <laughs> you can't do that. I, that, that, that no, I have not committed an offense. Now, another machine that we use, which is the best of the best, it has come at a time when hmm. we need it. Do you see these CCTV cameras? Mm -hmm. Whenever you're driving the vehicle. Do they work? My dear, you commit an offense. <laughs> now, mm -hmm. whenever you're driving, do you see these ones which are tall, mm -hmm. which are crossing the road? That is called uh, an automatic number plate recognition. ANPR camera. Automatic number plate recognition. recognition yes. Mm -hmm. That is specifically for traffic. That ANPR camera mm -hmm. will capture the number plate of the vehicle we we'll capture the 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 the, 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 the the picture of the driver. The NPR camera will capture the speed at which you're driving at. So it helps us in investigations. Mm -hmm. If the crash has happened a uh, hundred meters away from that, there was an NPR. Yes, which speed did the car pass? You understand. Mm -hmm. No, Carol, even before that, you can see at NPR, uh, the, this NPR camera shows that she was taking off at 100 kilometers per hour. Oh, no wonder. Mm -hmm. Carol has gotten a crash. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, how do they work? Mm -hmm. You've heard of hit and run accidents. Of course. Carol, you're driving on Hoima Road, you have reached Kachiri, you have knocked somebody dead and you. Actually, it happened today morning in Chiwe. Someone knocked a border, border man dead and sped And uh, you will not run away. I have given you a guarantee. In Uganda here, maybe when you go and take your car and you park it and never bring it back on the road. So I am telling you, Ugandans, once you have committed an offense on the road, things of running away no longer work. It can take some time to get you. You'll hide your vehicle. But you will bring it back. So long as it steps on the road. Even in my village in Shema, mm. there is a, a, a camera, an ANPR camera. So long as I, I, I pass. So what happens when you commit an offense? Mm -hmm. Like that one. In Chubi, who has knocked somebody dead and run away. An officer has already gotten the number plate. Now, what do we do? We blacklist 
that number plate. Now, once we blacklist that number plate, wherever you pass and there is that camera, the camera will make sound. So the person in the command center, that's why you see me moving with my radio communication. Now I'm operate you be D figure this, this and this. It is wanted by Katwe police station. It caused a, a hit and run photo on this and this date. Captured it. Before you go anywhere, pop, you see a traffic officer. Sir, you have an offense in Katwe. Park your vehicle. Katwe police kindly come and pick your driver. Which pant is arrested and the vehicle is here. You get what I'm trying to tell you? Mm -hmm. That is how Uganda police traffic, that's where we have reached. Now, we are going in another phase. Because we have noticed that Ugandans drive police. I don't know, let me uh, uh, explain more about it. Mm -hmm. You drive carefully when you know that there is a traffic officer there. <laughs> Huh? Mm. But once you pass that checkpoint, if you are over speeding, you'll go back to over speeding. You know what is most funny? Some people even wear the safety belts when they see a the police officer. officer. Then when they bypass, they remove the. Mm. I am 75 kgs. But this is science that I'm going to talk about. Whenever you get a crash, the, if I am driving, for example, at 80 kilometers per hour, and I get a crash, and I'm not wearing my safety belt, mm -hmm. the energy or the weight is going to be 60 times. That's why you find an accident has happened here. Then you find the body outside. But when you have your safety belt on, mm. it will get you. I'm not, but at least by uh, studies show at least 63 percent you will be saved. But even when you are not saved, at least we shall find a body. Mm. Let me tell you the worst accident scene that I, that you visit is the one when a person has gotten out of the car. And we have to get the head, get the intestines, get the legs, to make a body. Mm -hmm. And that is what the family receives. Just because you refused to wear your safety belt. The safety belt is not, is not for a traffic officer, it is yours. Now, I was telling you where we are getting to now. And we have started using it, but we have not reached there. We are getting to a level where a traffic officer will sit in a command center. Madam Carol, you're driving carelessly on Ginger Road, and I am looking at you in my camera. Now, Madam Carol is driving a motor vehicle, UAN figure this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. And I will be able to give you your ticket. That's where I want to be. Without well, even being on the road. Because the number, that's why we are encouraging people to register mm -hmm. their vehicles in their names. Maybe this time, whenever you get, like, for example, a traffic offense or you are involved in a crash, you reach at the police. If the vehicle is not your name, in your names, we shall force you to change the own ownership of the vehicle, and it, be, it is in your names. Mm -hmm. So basically, traffic for us, we are liaise with the URA, uh, who is the owner of this vehicle? Oh, it is here. Mm -hmm. OK, we can be able to, to liaise with the UDRS. Can we have the, the, the permit number of, 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 of Madame Carol? The permit number will come. Carol will go with her. We want to get there. Mm -hmm. Why are, we are not interested in punishment. We are, the reason why we are doing this is to see how we can reduce the 4,534 people to a lower number. Mm -hmm. Carol, 
the developed countries have more vehicles than us here. Yeah. Indeed, I think they have over 75 percent. But how come in Africa we are the ones who die? Mm -hmm. Sweden, last, Sweden last year lost only 100 people on, on, on the roads. We are in 4,500. They have more vehicles than us. So we are doing this to make sure that we can reduce. So those are the technologies that we have. We are training our officers in investigations. We do it all the time. Traffic police, where it is now, is able to investigate a crash. We have investigators that we train to tell you that this is the cause of this crash. This is exactly what happened. Yes. Of course, uh, the public sometimes is very scared. Like um, the drivers we have, when they knock someone, they be like, "Eh, the police is going to stress me. Let me just run away." Mm. I think uh, that's some of the those are some of the challenges we are facing when it comes to uh, traffic policing. But I want to first go for a short break. When I return, uh, we'll get into. Uh, the, the two hundred thousand that was raised, the two hundred thousand fine that was raised to two million shillings, oh. and why and how it's going to work out. And also, I would like to understand why vehicles I vehicles in poor me mechanical condition are still being allowed on the roads. We have taxis that are from way back in the nineties. The taxi can barely move, but it's carrying passengers over mm. fourteen people mm. on board. And uh, yeah, I'll return with that. Please stay with us on issues at hand. Uh, remember, we are powered by Protea Hotel by Marriott. We'll be back. Stay with us. Comfort and luxury at its best with Protea Hotel by Mario Tenteve. Please do check them out. They're on social media and their numbers are on your screen. Uh, please reach out in case you have a function, in case you have a, a dinner date with uh, your loved one as well as maybe a lunch date or a sleep-in. They do have uh, very good, beautiful uh, rooms in for you. But we are, on, we are at the discussion about traffic uh, police in general as well as traffic. How are people supposed to drive or how are people supposed to Take um, themselves when it comes to road safety. We also have pedestrians, by the way. They're oh, also yes. part of this. Oh, yes. um, but well, we see, yes. uh, Fandi, they, mm. there's this issue that uh, the pedestrian pavements mm. are being used by the border borders oh, yes. in case, uh, instead. And uh, there is no way to solve the issue because there's no traffic officer in every location where the pavements are. But what is a pedestrian supposed to do in case of uh, that issue? Like I uh, thank you, Carol. The, 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 like I had communicated that road safety is everybody's responsibility. And what you're talking about, you are very right, hundred mm. percent. The most vulnerable, the most vulnerable group. There are two groups mm. that we have in Uganda. Number one are the, are the, the pedestrians. Mm. Last year, we lost 1,500 pedestrians, border borders, 1,404. You saw the, the, the 4,000 figure that I gave you, 4,538, yeah. 1,500 mm. 1, were pedestrians. You are there, you are walking, you are in your own world, a vehicle comes and knocks you. A border border comes and knocks you. However, we have also what we call careless pedestrians. The number of careless pedestrians is increasing every day. My sisters and my brothers, whoever brought these smartphones here, a person crosses the road when he's on what? On WhatsApp. From nowhere, he doesn't bother. Is is on, on Twitter crossing the road. Now, when they kill you, 
because of your own carelessness. What do you expect of me as a traffic officer to do? However, what you talked about, the pedestrian walkways. We have seen pedestrian walkways endangered. We find people selling tomatoes on pedestrian walkways. We find border border stages on pedestrian walkways. So we see vehicles parked on pedestrian and anno the, the most annoying thing you find even these people of parking in Kampara here, they're the ones parking them there. So it is not only a call of police. I do not want to, 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 to push away from that responsibility. But I do not want also to crucify myself. What is the city authorities, the municipal councils, what are you doing about it? Why are you allowing the traders on pedestrian walkways. Why are you collecting money from people who park on the pedestrian walkway? Because it will be hard for me to come and give that person a ticket when it is KCC who has parked him there. You understand? Can we, the planning of KCC? For example, even, even other cities, especially the new cities, in our planning time, if a person, before you, you allow him to put a building, for example, if we could chase away buildings without parking space, because we are trying to, to reduce on the congestion that is on the road. then we need to opt for the mass transport, these buses. You'll find, let me give you an example. If Family TV had its buses, let's say you have a bus coming from Ginger Road, from Entebbe, from all the highways, around six, okay? That's where your workers are, and you have put six buses. Okay, six buses, each bus being able to take around 70 people, huh? mm. you'll find the space of, because 70 times six, that number is big, let's say you have that manpower strength, the people that you are bringing, instead of driving their private vehicles, then we shall have reduced on the condition. You see how we are fighting it? Can, can, can we change our mindset and we move away from this private, private, private to mass transport? However, they should, be, they should be very good. You get it? You talked about it before we, we had a break, about the, the, the vehicles which are in a dangerous mechanical condition. People are running away from public transport. Mass transport is the best solution to this condition that you're seeing out here. Yes, we even have crashes of buses, but how many do you, have, do, do you register in here? They are very few. They are very, mm. they are very few. <clears throat> this is a meaning we shall have also reduced on the carnages on the road. Mm. Now, you said we talk about the law. Um, uh, is that all about uh, the poor mechanical conditions? The po no, 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 uh, no. Police no. trying to maybe get, a, get oh, them off the road oh, before oh, we cross oh, to. Oh. Yes. Mm. The mechanical condition of the vehicle is one of the causes of the crashes. Let me first explain that. Mechanical condition. There are things that we look at. Number one, 
the tires of your vehicle. How are they? You have seen on, 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 on social media, do you know that people, even when the tires are worn out, they have gone ahead of getting a razor blade and they cut, <laughs> and they put the injurer so that the, the, the tires look new. But when you buy such a, such a tire, do you think you are okay? Mm -hmm. Sometimes me, I blame the people who buy them. You think, you, you, that is the truth. You have put your life to jeopardy. That tire is worn out, you're going to go on a highway, so long as you are above uh, 50 kilometers, you'll see, you'll see it bust. You're going to kill yourself. Number two, the lighting. The lighting, people ignore it. And especially at the night, at night, mm. we get crashes. You find one has one headlamp, the person is, the incoming vehicle thinks it's a Buddha border, then they come and run into each other, especially on the highways. So can we work on our lighting system? The braking system is another issue on the mechanical condition of the vehicle. The braking, when the brakes, for you want fast, the, the brakes start crying when you step on them, then that's when you'll know that, <laughs> that they, are, they are worn out, please. Then the steering system. There's another thing that people ignore, the wipers. We had a crash in, I think it was Kavari, between two buses. But the major cause of, the, of that crash was the visibility. One of the buses, the wiping system was not working. So he could not, because of the fog, he could not wipe his windscreen, neither could he see, the visibility was affected. And it, he ended up moving from his lane to the another lane, causing that crash. And he's not the only one. These days the weather has, the environment has changed, you do not know whether we're in a dry season or <laughs> rainy season, you'll be there, you see it's raining, you see, like that. Now, friends, the, the wipers are very important. Now, to, my, to, to, to the people, the PSV, passenger service vehicles, the taxis that you are you're talking about, mm. I am going to talk about your seats. You see, yours is a business. Whenever I go to the, board, to, to the, to the meetings of the taxis, of late, they are complaining that our funded border borders have taken away our jobs. We are no longer in, in true business. But what have you done, Uksiki, is a customer to come to your side? When I enter your taxi, I'll get out with a torn trouser. Trouser, because your taxi has, it, it, is, it is bad, really. Can we take care of the, of the seating capacity? where people sit in those taxis. Now, to us, Carol, we are enforcing, that is the truth. The Inspector General of Police recently decentralized the services of the Inspector of Vehicles. Before, he used to get the services of the Inspector of Vehicles from Naguruhia only was, I think, in Naguru, it was in Guru and, in, uh, and in Mbarara, where you would find IOV. Even when you're getting a permit, you have to come to Naguru to, to, to see the IOV. Now, they have decentralized in a Kampara metropolitan area alone. Yet, we have Naguru here. But all the three regions, the Inspector General of Police has posted the IOV. I have an IOV in, Ka in Kawempe, Kampara North. Uh, Katwe here has an IOV, Kampara South. Jinja Road has an IOV at Jinja Road, Kampara East. All regions in Uganda, 28 of them, each and every region, we have gotten very energetic young engineers, mechanical engineers, who are doing the IOV work. Literally meaning, in our operations now, 
Whenever we are going for operations, we move with this inspector of vehicles. And we are doing everything possible. But of course, even the government has helped us of scrapping up vehicles that have, they, they do not allow vehicles which are more than how many years? Nine? Mm -hmm. To come into the country. It's the meaning. Going forward, in the next three, five years, we shall be having only clean vehicles in, the, in, the, in Uganda here. Thank you. That is very good. Uh, but lastly, I would like to look at why the figures for committing traffic offenses were increased from 200,000 to 2 million. Oh. And is it going to be effective? Will it help uh, solve some of the problems we have, the traffic problems we have? You, you see, the media has, there's a way it has mis misunderstood this, this law. Mm -hmm. The Amended Traffic and Road Safety Act, Chapter 361, that law has been in existence, but it was in the Roads Act. Now, the Traffic and Road Safety Directorate does not have a mandate in enforcing the Roads Act. Roads Act is being enforced by UNRWA. Okay? UNRWA. Now, Section 52 mm. of the Roads Act was talking about speed. And the punishment that it was giving was on conviction. If you are got while driving in excess of the prescribed speed limit, you will be charged, you'll be, you'll be able to pay 168 currency points. 168. Or a period of not more than seven years. Now, through the wisdom of the, of, of, of the fountain of honor, and of course the legislators, and the Minister of, of, of Works and Transport, they have moved mm -hmm. that to section 119A. Of the Traffic and Road Safety Act. And now, what do they say? That the minister, the minister I talk about, the Minister of Works and Transport, will prescribe the speed on a certain road. What does he do? That's when you will see in a built up area, you'll see signages telling you drive either at 30 kilometers per hour, 70 kilometers, or 50 kilometers per hour. Even the highway code also helps. Because it's very clear. Now, if you are got driving in excess of the prescribed speed limit and you're charged in the courts of law and the police has tendered in its evidence and it's true you are above the prescribed speed limit. On conviction, we saw in the Rhodes Act, I told you it was 168 currency points. Yes. We saw it, the president has reduced now to 100 currency points. 100 times 20,000 because per currency point is how much? 20,000. 20, it is the 2 million shillings. Or imprisonment of 3 years. Or both. We have moved from 7 years to 3 years. Now, we, we, we have seen that the law has, hmm? in, in Kiswahili we, we say it meregeza kidogo. But however, mm. Ugandans, the, the media has put it as if it is too much. Now, there's something that I need to air out. The EPS ticket, and I want you to listen to it very well, the drivers. The EPS ticket has not moved from 200,000 to 2 million shillings. We do not have a regulation guiding us. The law is not yet there. Though we believe if the law moves from 200,000 on EPS to 2 million shillings, what water scare? People will listen. Okay. Now, literally meaning I'm going to be able to give you a ticket of 200,000, but if you refuse, or if the way you are driving is a reckless and a police officer, 
Of course, these speed guns are, are, are manned by an office of the rank of an assistant inspector of police mm -hmm. and above. And an officer deems it fit to charge you to courts of law, you will either pay a fine of two million or you'll serve three years or both sentences. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time, uh, Afande Bruce Oinebi, Superintendent of Police. Uh, we have had a very beautiful discussion. However, of course, uh, we have a lot to talk about when it comes to um, traffic police. Maybe we shall have another day with him uh, mm. to exhaust the things like zebra crossing rules, how people are supposed to act when they are stopped, and how exactly people are supposed to act uh, when, of course, there's an accident, uh, there's a scene of uh, accident. What exactly is the public supposed to do? Are you supposed to record videos? And Send, a, mm. send them out there and what exactly uh, how exactly are we supposed to behave when it comes to traffic police remember to guard yourself uh, we, we learned these things in primary look left, look right before you cross the road look left again and then go uh, also use the zebra crossings and uh, don't drive when you are drunk, That is the those are the statements we've grown up hearing and I believe as a Ugandan driver you know them however there is this gadget that Afande has, next time I'll <laughs> ask him what exactly it does, I see I see see it a lot with police officers, mm. but uh, it has been issues at hand. My name is Karen Omani. Stay with Family TV. Thank you. Don't go away.